Κυρίες και κύριοι, καλώς ήρθατε στη συνάντευση τύπου. Welcome to this press conference, ladies and gentlemen. The informal meeting of energy ministers uh, has been concluded, and the president of the uh, council responsible for the environment, energy and climate change, Mr. Magnatis, will inform you of the conclusions, and then Mr. Günther Oettinger will take the floor followed by which we will take any questions you may have. Mr. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you very much indeed to being present at this press conference. Let me start to begin with. We had a highly fruitful and constructive meeting in the course of the two-day meeting, this informal meeting of energy ministers here in Athens today and yesterday. Now, all of the issues we discussed are the issues which are of concern to the European Union as a whole, but all of the member states individually as well. Clearly, we have the question of energy security, where uh, clearly uh, right now that's of crucial uh, uh, political and uh, energy importance. And then there was also the question of the major um, the financing of projects of common interest, the major infra infrastructure, also energy savings and enhancing energy efficiency was discussed, and of course the major question of governance, in other words, how we are going to achieve the uh, objectives, the Union's objectives uh, on this major package of climate change and energy through to 2030. On energy security, we've been discussing this in a time of crisis in the Ukraine when we're looking at the prospects uh, as well. We looked at the possibilities and measures which can be adopted and based on the working document which was circulated by the presidency we uh, had our debate. The first point was actually uh, establishing and furthering connectivity in order to ensure energy security towards 2030. The second question were measures to uh, reduce energy demand. Thirdly, developing uh, alternative uh, forms of uh, energy uh, and also bearing in mind, of course, the uh, uh, exploitation of hydrocarbons in the eastern Mediterranean. Also the question of uh, uh, domestic suppliers as well and uh, routes for natural gas and third and then also the uh, an operational energy market and uh, completing that and then we had the question of uh, having a single united voice and strategy for the European Union uh, in the Union's external relations on energy and uh, seventhly we also talked about uh, revising all of the, the uh, community solidarity mechanisms for all member states, from all member states, to make them more effective. There are clearly short-term measures, uh, emergency plans, for example, uh, and also the question of uh, reverse flows, uh, storage, and then there are long-term measures as well, which would be the question of the, uh, the um, European networks. On the dialogue with third countries and suppliers, it's of crucial importance uh, to continue that, as well as to ensure that our energy policy is closely tied in uh, with all of the other sectoral or cross-cutting union policies. We will be discussing energy security once again at the uh, forthcoming council under the Hellenic Presidency to be held in uh, June in Luxembourg, and we are awaiting a document uh, in the near future from the uh, Commissioner of the European Commission. On the major energy infrastructure projects, it was very useful, very important to hear the comments which were made, and indeed a decision on having a, um, a one-stop stop, stop, uh, service for these, for all member states, so that uh, the implementation of these major projects can move ahead very quickly. On energy efficiency and savings, 
Uh, I'm going to share you with you my own personal view, if I may. I think that um, we stress that uh, that is the biggest energy reserve, the least used energy reserve in the European Union, and there is huge potential to make progress on energy savings. We uh, said that there were uh, financial instruments which could help us. For example, all of the uh, uh, fiscal instruments we have, the structural funds as well, all of those, and of course the European Investment Bank. On the discussion of financing for the major infrastructures, but also on uh, energy saving actions, we as the presidency will raise this point once again at the next Energy Council because, uh, um, in, because uh, energy security and the competitiveness of European industry as well as the uh, provision of electricity supply and other ones to European households, particularly to the more vulnerable ones. These are some of our major priorities, uh, our major uh, social policies and development aims of the Union. Finally, over the working lunch, we discussed the major question of new governance. Very simply, in other words, how these objectives which have been set for 2030 so that our policies on climate change can uh, move ahead at the same time as those uh, on, uh, on energy, how we can continue to work with these. And then with the assistance of the European Commission, we want to ensure that we make major steps towards achieving our final objective, which is to ensure that the European Union remains a leader on climate change and at the same time that it enhances its energy security by using many different sources and routes, and all of that within a framework which will always ensure the competitiveness of our industry. In other words, that we maintain and increase the number of jobs and provide cheap energy to uh, households and citizens within the Union. I would like to warmly thank all of the delegations who took part in this informal meeting of energy ministers, the uh, uh, Council Secretariat and the European Commission, particularly Commissioner Ertinger, because we've had excellent cooperation with them leading up to this, and I'm sure that uh, at the end of the Hellenic Presidency, that will mean that we, we really will be able to have a very positive assessment of our presidency in these first six months of 2014. That's all I have to say, uh, and I'd like to hand over to the uh, Commissioner. The Commissioner has the floor. Dear Mr. Maniatis, Mr. Saoris, ladies and gentlemen, certainly at the present moment, with the crisis uh, between Russia, Ukraine, and the European Union, the subject of uh, security of supplies is right at the top of our agendas. I think that uh, I can thank the ministers for perfect. Uh, preparation on crucial points in our common European energy policy. When it's a, a question of security of supply, it's not primarily a matter of coal or oil, but gas is what is in the forefront. Our Russian partners are the most important suppliers of gas to the markets of the European Union. That has been the situation for more than 40 years. And uh, on the part of the European Union, we have on the possible list of sanctions vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Russia, we have the energy sector in particular, uh, the gas sector as being something which is inappropriate. That is, despite the crisis, we are prepared to continue our gas partnership. Russia supplies uh, our gas and uh, Europe pays for gas. A weapon 
in the form of gas supplies, deliveries, or in the form of uh, the refusal of gas deliveries is something that we would consider uh, to be wrong. Uh, therefore, uh, the EU and the 28 member states of uh, uh, the Union still expect Russia to um, supply us uh, with gas and to uh, meet uh, contractual obligations, but uh, uh, we expect it to supply uh, Ukraine. Moldova and the countries of the Western Balkans. We consider uh, that security of supplies concerns these countries too, these neighboring and partner countries, Ukraine, Moldova, and the countries in the Western Balkans. We consider that they uh, are countries for which we also have responsibility. There have been intensive talks in the last few days with Ukraine and uh, with its uh, state gas undertaking, NAFTA gas, and also with the Russian energy minister, Mr. Novak, and uh, the CEO of uh, Gazprom, Mr. Miller, also. Monday, in uh, Berlin, I'll be uh, having a long working discussion with Mr. Miller and the um, ministers, uh, minister from uh, uh, Russia. I'll be seeing Mr. Prodan, the Energy Minister of Ukraine in Brussels, and uh, we expect to have uh, a trilateral meeting which we're preparing at the highest level, and uh, with the intention that um, security supplies should be secured after June the 1st. As a result of the crisis, we have instructions from the European Council and uh, our good discussions yesterday and today um, were a response to that, a very positive response. There will be uh, meeting the heads of the government at the end of June and uh, uh, we'll be tabling a communication on um, the need for security supply and stability and the need to, to deal with dependency on the other hand and uh, reduce it on the basis of different scenarios. We want to be able to present that. That has been, well, that was the first and the central um, topic of uh, the informal energy council yesterday and today in um, Athens. And then energy efficiency. This was our second subject which we dealt with this morning. We need investments to ensure that uh, energy is used uh, sparingly, uh, to ensure that energy savings are possible and to ensure that a more efficient use of energy in the coming years in Europe should be possible as a consequence of the present crisis and generally uh, for reasons of uh, climate uh, change and protection of the climate. In uh, September, um, the Commission will be tabling a proposal before the Member States uh, on how we can pursue our energy efficiency strategy, which at present runs until uh, 2020 and uh, provides for uh, savings of 20% uh, percent and uh, we want to be able to pursue that with a new savings objective in the period between 2020 and 2030. And uh, we uh, want to count on diversification if you're dependent on uh, imports, but you have several suppliers, then uh, dependency uh, can't become something uh, that uh, means you can be blackmailed. Uh, alongside uh, uh, Russia, we have Norway as uh, the second supplier from which we import. The Norwegian minister was uh, present yesterday and today. And then thirdly, we have Algeria. Fourthly, we have the Southern Corridor, which in the coming years should be able to uh, transmit uh, or, or convey um, sizable quantities of uh, uh, gas uh, um, to Europe uh, via Greece and Bulgaria coming from Azerbaijan. We are also counting on LNG gas on ship terminals so that uh, we can receive from Qatar, Nigeria, Libya, uh, Algeria, perhaps USA and Australia, we can receive gas that can be transported to us. We want um, to keep open the option of shale gas 
that is uh, our own unconventional um, gas production. We have a number of sources that we want to work on. In addition, uh, we have the fact that we want to build uh, pipelines. The third subject was infrastructure. Energy infrastructure is the mother of any energy strategy. Um, gas pipelines, electricity networks, gas storage capacities, reverse flow, gas pipelines, that is, that can transport gas in both directions according to needs, LNG terminals. We you want, uh, and we had an intensive debate on this here in Athens yesterday, and, today, and uh, this has been revealing. In the coming years, we want to start on a number of projects which uh, will be co-financed out of the European budget and which can lead to a reduction in uh, energy dependency, cater for more uh, competition and help complete uh, the internal market. Uh, then we have Connecting Europe under the European budget for the year uh, 2015 to 2020. This has been decided upon 5.8 billion euro which can we use for projects on the basis of co-financing in the member states or by way of guarantees for, or for uh, interest rate subsidies or for project bonds. We can make this money available. With this money, we're going to start this year with the acceleration of the uh, development and construction of European infrastructure. And then something which has been mentioned by the minister, 2030, presumably there's no sector in our economy, which is so keen and uh, has uh, to be keen on long-term stability in planning. We have uh, our plans up to 2020, but for investors into production, into storage, into um, pipelines, efficiency measures, investors. Um, see um, 2020 as last night and uh, uh, 2030 as tomorrow morning. So we need to have discussions in the October European Council uh, and there we shall table a comprehensive uh, uh, policy paper as to what uh, aims in terms of energy and energy efficiency we have for the coming uh, period. This has to be a guideline for our European and national uh, European policies and uh, energy legislation. So, security of supply, uh, ways through the crisis, efficiency, infrastructure, and 2030. I think all of this formed a coherent debate, which for me and the Commission uh, produced some important findings so that the proposals uh, of the Commission can uh, expect uh, approval in uh, the European Council and then uh, in the European Parliament, which is to be re-elected in 10 days' time. So we're ready to take any questions you may have. The gentleman in the second row. Emmanuel Agri from Agence Europe in Brussels. Two questions about the uh, security of supply. First of all, to the, to the Commissioner. You were quoted uh, yesterday by the German newspaper that um, you might put on the table of the European Council in June a proposal about to raise the um, stock of gas, uh, obligatory stock of gas, to 30 days to 60 days. Can you confirm this and maybe ask, uh, tell, uh, tell us uh, two, or two or three other major um, proposals you, you could put on the table? And my second question is about the... Um, about this idea that is promoted by the Prime Minister of Poland uh, about the energy union. Was this idea already maybe discussed, or I don't know, maybe the idea circulated uh, among this uh, council uh, during these two days? First question to the presidency, do you, um, will you support this idea as a presidency? And um, second question about the uh, unique price of gas. Um, I mean, it's a Question for both the presidency and commission. Do you think this idea is really feasible uh, to have a unique uh, price of gas uh, for the World European Union? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Yes, on the Polish proposal, of course, all of these are being discussed. This type of issue is always discussed at uh, Council of Ministers level. I should just remind you that informal meetings do not take decisions. They prepare the process so that in the council meetings held either in Brussels or in Luxembourg, the final decisions can be taken there. Uh, we discussed other documents. And on the second question now, on the single price for natural gas, well, I would say single negotiations on natural gas. There are member states who fully support the single negotiations vis-a-vis -vis all of the suppliers to all third countries. But there are other member states who feel that this type of approach is going to create problems of competition and uh, therefore, according to these views, it wouldn't be to the benefit of the union and the union's economy. In any case, this is an issue, uh, and I think I can sum this up here, because as you know, the uh, um, presidency uh, tries to, uh, to find a compromise between divergent views. And uh, well, you know, we want to achieve good compromises, uh, and that's not going to work if you put forward your own national positions. But if I can sum this up, the proposal of the presidency is that the single voice vis-a-vis -vis third countries on as many issues as possible will definitely help the union to really forge ahead. When that is combined with the um, unification and uh, emerging of the energy market for the entire union, and I'm speaking as the Council of Ministers now, then we feel that we're going to be making effective headway. One final point. The Commissioner's comments were very interesting on this point, and uh, uh, I, I uh, would like to put this to you. On this question of the uh, on transport and telecommunications, um, the EU is in the 21st century, but unfortunately on the question of uh, connections between energy networks of member states, we are still back in the 19th century. So, you know, we're facing this major challenge, a major challenge, uh, along with all, uh, so the uh, single rules of uh, a single uh, competitive energy market. We have to move ahead very quickly on all of those procedures which will uh, unite uh, our networks and will move towards creating this single pan-European and cross trans-European energy network. That was by way of an answer to your question. The Commissioner has the floor. We at present are drawing up our proposal for the European Council, our concept paper, and yesterday's deliberations and those of today will definitely uh, obviously be taken into account. At present, we have a gas a supply a security uh, directive which is in force, a European law, on the basis of which the member states have an obligation to uh, build up stocks and maintain stocks uh, for, which represent 30 days of a winter month. That is, gas requirements for households they have to store that. At present, on the basis of uh, a much older um, piece of law, we have uh, uh, the obligation for the member states to store 90 days worth of oil, and uh, we have 125 days worth of oil in our European tanks. So. Uh, we need to decide whether we're going to propose to the European Council that the gas uh, security of supply directive uh, should be 
uh, amended and that the minimum quantity of gas that uh, we have an obligation to store, whether we shouldn't uh, bring it up to, say, 50 days or 60 days. At present, I'm uh, consulting my uh, experts, getting them to make calculations, and uh, these calculations have to be made together with the European gas industry, 50 days or 60 days, and then interconnectors with reverse, reverse flow, uh, so that in the case of need, out of any member state, uh, gas should be able to be transported to any other member state. That involves an uh, amount of gas which makes it possible to bridge a certain period in the cold period of the year. Uh, this can certainly reinforce our security. As Mr. Magnatis has said, we need uh, a common uh, uh, energy, external energy policy, uh, common stand uh, uh, vis a vis the outside world. This is going to be part of our policy uh, paper. Mm, we've had intergovernmental agreements, agreements between member states with uh, uh, third countries. And we feel that these uh, would need now to be negotiated at the European level, and uh, we need to have general European uh, laws uh, for uh, procurement, public procurement, uh, protection of nature, uh, protection of the climate, uh, so that uh, Europe should be able to take a common stand vis-a-vis, -vis, say, Norway, Russia, Algeria. And this is something which can only reinforce our position vis-a-vis -vis third countries. I have uh, no uh, regard for a, a price dictated by uh, the political level. This would run counter to all rules of the market economy. And as I see it, this is something that private industry would um, consider uh, not compatible with the laws of supply and demand. However, the price of oil is uh, established in uh, Paris, uh, Rotterdam, Athens. Uh, there's the same uh, level in Chicago and Shanghai. It's the same. There's a functioning uh, market for oil with competition. At present, the price is $107 for a barrel of oil. But we don't have one gas price. Why? Because there's no market, which is why I want there to be a common price which is harmonized through market developments. If we had uh, all the uh, pipelines that we're planning, if we had more competition, more sources, more routes, more diversification, then we would have a uh, single gas price. It's striking that the gas price in the Baltic states is a lot higher than it is in France. It's striking that Gazprom, wherever it has a monopoly, can sell its gas at a higher price than where it is in competition with Libya, Norway, or Algeria. So that completing the internal market with infrastructure, uh, with uh, internal market rules being properly transposed, that is the best way and the right way in terms of uh, legal order for us to uh, have a common gas price. Let me uh, make a comparison. If you uh, buy a glass of Uzo, it should be the same price uh, than, as in Stuttgart. But if you have to pay uh, uh, 20 euro more in Stuttgart, then people would all go to Stuttgart to sell their Uzo and uh, uh, look at uh, the situation um, determined by transport. In, in a few years' time, we want uh, um, all citizens to pay exactly the same amount uh, wherever they are in the European Union for gas. Thank you. I have a question both for the presidency and for the commissioner. How, what would you comment on yesterday's letter from, President, from Mr. Putin on the question of uh, natural gas supplies from the 1st of July? 
do you worry that there may be uh, that supplies to the European Union may be upset? A question to the Commissioner. There were two points pending before the Commission uh, relating to Greece on electricity supplies and also, also on DESFAR question, DESFAR related questions as well. What is a potential answer? What form is any potential answer likely to take? The position as regards DESFA, that is the Greek transport network operator for gas, is um, something which is along the right uh, track. The Greek government is uh, pushing forward with the discussions, and uh, this is part of uh, the aim to have a price uh, um, or uh, profits that can uh, improve uh, the situation in uh, Greece so that the uh, debt burden shouldn't continue to increase and uh, so as to ensure that uh, um, Greece becomes more competitive, gains in credibility and can resolve its uh, problems. And so that's why it's important this process uh, should uh, continue. Uh, the uh, suppliers, the Azerbaijani Gas and Oil Company, and uh, for us it plays an important role from the point of view of diversification and uh, uh, to have gas coming from uh, along the southern corridor um, through Greece and then uh, up to Italy and Germany. They're going to be our decisive partner. We are accompanying this process and we want uh, uh, European internal market law to be adhered to, but I'm certain that uh, as planned this year, this privatization uh, route will have been properly traveled and uh, that Sokarden will be responsible for operation and distribution in the network in Greece. The letter from Mr. Putin was uh, received two days ago by 13 heads of state and government, and in it, Mr. Putin had announced that as from the 1st of June, gas would have to pay first for its gas and only then receive it. Uh, in saying that, he didn't say anything new. It was known to us that Gazprom, in fact, on Tuesday, had published this. And at our first trilateral negotiation in Warsaw on May the 2nd, we agreed that by the end of May, without payment, gas should be delivered to Ukraine, and that as from the 1st of June, a solution would have to be found, and that there shouldn't be any interruptions. We're working on this solution, and I'm moderately optimistic that in 10 to 14 days, we will uh, succeed in resolving the outstanding issues and thus deal and reduce uh, the supply problems for Ukraine. Uh, Mr. Putin's uh, letter indirectly made a, a pleasing statement. Uh, there was a letter that uh, was sent to us in April. In April, Mr. Putin uh, presented three bills, the bill for gas deliveries, which are not paid for and which we accept as regards the gas quantity, but as regards the gas price, we still feel we need to have a discussion. But in the first letter, he also mentioned the take or pay clause and made a demand for 18 billion euro from Ukraine for gas quantities that had not been uh, taken but had been contracted for and which had to be paid for. It was take or pay. Then the second bill was that of the Crimea uh, rebate, $100 uh, reduction in customs duties because the Black Sea Fleet uh, was uh, to be allowed to be stationed in the Crimea in Crimea between 2017 and 2042. And Mr. Putin said that given that Crimea had become Russia uh, through annexation, which was counter to uh, 
uh, international law. He said that the rebate had to be paid for. In the second letter, he called for 11 uh, billion. In the first letter, he mentioned 18 billion. So there was a, uh, the dispute has been reduced to the quantity of gas that has to be discussed. Uh, it's more or less uh, established now, but the gas price still has to be discussed. Uh, the need for discussion and the need for, or the potential for dispute has been very much reduced. In the next few days, we shall try to come to an agreement. An agreement has to be uh, found between Russia and Ukraine there. We're just moderators. We want to help, but uh, we are indirectly responsible for the overall package. Thank you. As presidency on the letter from Putin, all I can say is that because the uh, letter was sent to heads of government, clearly the head of heads of governments will decide on the content of their response and the way in which they respond. In other words, whether they're going to respond individually or through President Barroso. That is something which is going to be settled very quickly at the uh, heads of government level. Now, not as presidency, but as a member state, as Greece, I would like to answer your question on DESFA. Greece wants as quickly as possible to uh, wind up these procedures uh, between DESFA and Troika. My second comment is that there has been an exchange of documents between the uh, government and the commission, and uh, there have also been discussions at expert level and corresponding decisions. And my third comment would be that in line with the position of the Greek government, we can very quickly, uh, I think, uh, certify the uh, transition and uh, this far now in its new shape on the basis of the uh, National Energy Authority in, uh, in uh, the regulatory authority in Greece. And then we will follow the steps which uh, may be deemed appropriate in the future as well. So, to conclude, we think there are uh, time clauses which apply to the conclusion of this. Both Greece and the European Commission and all member states, all of them together, want this uh, transfer to happen in line with European law, but as quickly as possible. I have one question for the Commissioner. Have you assessed the repercussions of these changes on energy saving? The uh, Minister, the Chairman, was saying that energy savings represented the greatest reserve for the European Union. What uh, repercussion will have that have on construction, uh, and uh, particularly for Greece, because we have the SMEs as well. We have um, also the Connecting Europe facility, which uh, was concluded recently with the package which was allowed for projects. Now, we've also got project bonds as well, um, and uh, that well, is this going to uh, attract investors? And also, my third question now is on uh, the transmission of gas and electricity. Are you going to use shipping for this in order to achieve uh, better results as far as the prices are concerned? In the area of container shipping and, generally speaking, the large ships, for many years still, we shall use oil and oil products, and oil-driven uh, engines will need this. But uh, the technology uh, of engines is becoming more innovative, that is, engines 
for each mile traveled or for each ton carried or per passenger, this uh, consumption has been uh, diminishing so that the environmental friendliness of shipbuilding is well underway. 40% of all energy is consumed in buildings for heating, uh, for cooling, and for electricity. Industrial buildings, uh, public buildings, and private housing, which is why in our energy efficiency strategy, we have placed emphasis on the building sector. We have, uh, for new buildings, uh, got a clear uh, directive that prescribes how a building in the future from 2020 onwards has to be configured in terms of energy consumption. But most of the buildings that Europe needs have been built. So it's essentially a question of modernization and renovation of the housing stock and the building stock. And this is why in the European budget that applies for the next seven years, we have earmarked an amount of more than 2 billion euro per year, which uh, will be available in the uh, European Union structural funds and which can be called upon in order to help with the modernization and renovation of uh, the building stock, public and uh, private, on a co-financing basis. And we think that with that, uh, uh, an important incentive is offered to the member states uh, so that, and they can reinforce this with their own budgetary resources in order to make investments profitable and in order to offer incentives so that private but also public uh, local authority um, Investors can invest in the coming years into insulation, new heating, new windows uh, to reduce the energy needs of buildings and so that they can take the necessary decisions in this respect. Well, I would like to answer both as presidency and then also uh, as a Greek minister. As the presidency, I would like to give you a couple of numbers for the EU level. For a few imports each year, the union pays about 420 billion euros. If we to set an ambitious goal for 2030 to increase energy savings and also our energy efficiency, then I think we could save 300 uh, um, billion euros per year. Energy saving possibilities could uh, um, cover 60% of buildings, 40% um, in the tertiary sector, and about 40% in transport as well, where there is huge scope. Now, to put on my minister's hat now, it's clear that Greece is particularly interested in uh, the transport of energy products, uh, natural gas, electricity, LNG, by sea, because we have the largest uh, fleet and uh, also we uh, support the transport of uh, energy products by sea. Just to give you an idea of the savings for Greece, the national objective in Greece is by 2030 to save up to 30 percent. And in order to achieve that, we are already implementing the first, taking the first initiatives in this uh, new upcoming uh, programming period from 2014 to 2020 because we are uh, imagining uh, total investments, private and public, uh, well, community funds, national funds and the private sector is what I mean, of about 1.1 billion euros 
which breaks down to 700 million for housing, 250 billion for public buildings, and uh, then about uh, 200 for professional buildings. Energy savings and the positive fallout that this will have, not only in reducing consumption, but also in creating tens of thousands of new jobs in the uh, um, construction and housing sector, but also for, uh, for the uh, industries which produce insulating materials as well. We see this as being a crucially important new source of uh, growth for our country, but at the same time it's also a uh, fundamental a pillar of growth and sustainability which will be environmentally friendly and will turn our whole economy in that direction. So energy savings, particularly in the, uh, in the buildings sector, I think is one of the uh, major fundamental development and growth choices for the coming years. Uh, well, I'm afraid that we are going to have to close because the Commissioner has a flight to catch. I think we can maybe take one question still from someone who hasn't raised a question so far. The gentleman in the fourth row. Yes, yes. Coming back to Mr. Putin's letter, The figure which has been mentioned, 495 uh, dollars, well, Ukraine saying that that's not correct, it's not fair. But since 2009, that price hasn't changed. Ukraine signed at that figure, and it's in the agreement signed by Ukraine in the contract. Uh, but the, then there were, there were uh, rebates as well, but the, the, the price hasn't changed since 2009. So what do you think Ukraine is going to do? Where, it's going, where is it going to find the money to pay the prices that Russia claims are fair? Could the European Union provide Ukraine with some money maybe to pay off its obligations? Thank you. The European Union, together with the International Monetary Fund, is in the process of working on this, and initial decisions have already been taken in order to stabilize Ukraine financially and in order to give uh, money for the Ukrainian state budget. And then it's up to Ukraine to decide what it does uh, with uh, this money. Uh, whether it gives part of the money to NAFTA gas in order to pay uh, outstanding bills as to the amount uh, to be paid uh, for per thousand cubic meters is something that we're negotiating on and we hope to be able to come out with an answer in two weeks' time. Thank you very much indeed for your participation in this press conference.